I will be installing Kali Linux on my computer without using a USB drive, DVD, or VM. As I'm installing it directly on my computer, I'll have full access to the hardware and no overhead compared to having it virtualized. As seen here in disk management, I'll be installing it on my existing drive. And according to the documentation on higher end systems, you'll need to aim for 20 gigabytes of free space. And for the install media, you'll need 800 megabytes. So here I have 414 gigabytes free, so I have more than enough free space. So to get started, go to Kali.org, get Kali, and then scroll down for x86-64, and I'm going to be downloading the net installer ISO. Go into your downloads folder, and I'm going to mount the image. Hit enter or right click and hit mount. Open. And then next, I'm going to go back into disk management. I'm going to select my C drive and I'm going to shrink it. Shrink volume. And I'm going to shrink it by about 50 gigs. So about 50,000 megabytes and then 800 megabytes for the installation media. So that'll be 5,800. And then shrink. And then next, Right click on the unallocated space, new simple volume, next, 800, next, next, change it to FAT32. I'll label it as Cali ISO, next, finish. All right, so it's been created. I'm going to go back to Explorer and I'm going to copy everything from the D drive and then go to my new drive, the F drive. I'm going to paste. Okay, it's completed. Going back to disk management, and we see here my existing 100 megabyte EFI partition is where the boot files are located. And by default, when you install Kali Linux, it's going to use the existing EFI partition here. Now, Microsoft is known for removing anything not related to Windows in this EFI partition. So if I were to install Kali, it would install the Kali boot file in this partition. And sometime later, Microsoft would delete it. And this would happen, for example, after a Windows update, which means I won't be able to get back into Kali. So to prevent this, I will be using a separate EFI partition for Kali in order to avoid this. Now, one thing about the Kali installer is even if you have a separate EFI partition, it will not use it and still use this 100 megabyte EFI partition. So to prevent this, I am going to change the type from EFI system partition here into a basic data partition. And then once done, I'll change it back. So to do that, open up command prompt as administrator, go into disk part, list my disk, select disk zero, list my partitions. It's going to be partition number one, the 100 megabyte partition. So I'll select it and then type in help set ID. And then we're gonna change the ID on it, set ID equals, and then it's gonna scroll up. And here's the hex value for the basic data partition. Copy and then paste, enter. All right, and we see that the ID, the EFI system partition ID is no longer there. And now I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. In my BIOS, I have Secure Boot disabled. And if you have Fast Boot, disable it as well. And in my BIOS, I have a Boot Override section, so I can do a one-time boot for the Kali Linux installation media. And in my case, it's seen as UFI OS. And how do I know it's labeled as UFI OS? If I go back into Windows, open up a command prompt as administrator, Type in bcd edit forward slash enum and then firmware, enter. And then I can see here at the bottom, it's the F drive where I copied the files and the description UFI OS. So I'm going to boot into it, UFI OS, and the installer menu comes up, graphical install. And before starting, hit control alt plus F2. And then they'll say, please press enter to activate this console, hit enter. And so this will open up a shell and type in block ID, BLK ID, and this will list your devices and the partitions. 
and I'm going to look for my drive F and I had the label as Kelly ISO. So it's dev SDA4 and I'm going to mount this so it's available. So I'm going to make a directory called CD-ROM under root. And then I'm going to mount it. The type is VFAT dev SDA4 and it's going to CD-ROM. And then going back to the installer, control alt plus F5, English, continue, United States, continue, American English, continue. All right, so I have two network interfaces, one wired and one for wireless. And if I go through wireless, enter in SSID manually, type it in, WPA2, and put in the passphrase. Put in your host name, and then put in your domain name. For me, I don't have one, leave it blank. And then the full name for the new user, and the username for the account, put in the password, time zone, and then partition disks, I'm going to select manual. And there's the free space, and I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going to have three partitions, one for the separate EFI partition, one for swap, and one for everything else, slash. Double click, create a new partition, and this is going to be for the separate EFI partition for Kali Linux. Do 512 megabytes, continue, beginning, change the use as, EFI system partition. Done setting up the partition. Go to the free space. Create a new partition. And I have 12 gigabytes of memory on my system, so I'll put 12 gigabytes. Continue. Beginning. Change the use as. Change it to swap. Done setting up the partition. Going to the free space. Create a new partition, and I'm going to use the remaining space. Continue. And this is going to be for slash. Done setting up the partition. All right, so the three partitions have been created. The EFI system partition, swap, and slash. So finish partitioning and write changes to disk. And it's asking to confirm. Yes. Continue. All right, and during the install, it's going to go back to the Debian installer main menu and it's going to be at the configure the package manager. And if you hit enter, it's just going to go back. And the reason for this is because it's related to the slash CD-ROM directory. And then so I'm going to unmount it. Going back into the shell, control alt F2, and I'm going to unmount it. U-mount slash CD-ROM, go back, control alt plus F5, and then enter. All right, it's asking for a software selection, what you want to install. And if you're not sure, you can just leave it as the default and just hit continue. And now it's going to do the install. And this will take a little bit of time, depending on how fast your internet is and how fast is your computer. All right, installation is complete and it's time to boot into your new system. Now, when you reboot, it may not go into Kali. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my BIOS to check to confirm. All right, so in my boot options, first I have the Windows Boot Manager, then I have the UFI OS, and then Kali is number three. So I have to change it, so Kali is first, and then save changes and exit. Now you may notice that it doesn't show Windows here in the dual boot, so we're gonna fix that. Go into Kali, log in. All right, I'm at the desktop. Before fixing Grub, going to make the 100 megabyte partition seen as an EFI partition again. Going to start up Gparted, hit start, Gparted, enter, put in your password, and then the 100 megabyte partition here. I'm going to right click on it, manage flags, I'm going to set the boot flag on it, close, close. Now I'm going to open up a terminal, I'm going to sudo in, put in my password. And now I'm going to edit the Etsy default grub file. And you can use an editor, for example, like nano or vi. I'll use nano. 
scroll down and search for the line where it says grub disable OS prober equals false. Remove the hash in front. Hit Control X to exit. Save, yes. And then enter. And then type in OS prober. And we see it's found the Windows Boot Manager, so that's good. And now I'm going to create a new grub configuration file. All right, it's been created, and we see at the bottom, found the Windows Boot Manager, so that's good. I'm going to close, and now I'm going to test a few apps just to ensure that Kali works. So I'm going to go and start up Wireshark, put in my password, and it comes up as expected, so that's good. Close, and I'm going to open up Nmap. All right, and we see Nmap there, and there's the help session that is being displayed. And I'm going to reboot my computer, go back into Grub to ensure Windows comes up. All right, Grub comes up, and we see Kali here, and there's the Windows Boot Manager. I'm going to log in. I'm going to open up Disk Management. All right, and we see the three partitions that had been created. The 800 megabyte partition with the installation media it may seem that it's safe to delete it, but if you do, you may run into a partition ordering issue, so it's best just to keep it. So that's it. That's how you can install Kali Linux on your computer without using a USB drive, DVD, or VM. I hope this video was useful, and I thank you for watching. Bye now.